This is my Ableton Clip Launcher clone made in Pure Data. So the first button is the mute, and everything after that plays a clip like this. Now, when we click on another clip, it waits until the next measure based off of the input BPM. So I have this set to 120 because my samples were all recorded at 120. Except that Ableton Live lets you change like the time signature and when it switches. So instead of switching at the end of the measure, you could do like um, a half measure or a quarter or whatever. I just haven't built that in here, but if you download this and mess around with it, you could definitely implement that. It'd be pretty easy. So the way this works is that it loads a text file containing the paths to the samples that you want to load into the clips. What I mean by that is there's a text object here which contains all of the four paths to the different sounds. And so what happens when you open the program is it loads those sounds into the four samplers. And then when you're switching between them, it doesn't load anything from the disk, it just plays the samplers from the arrays that they contain. And so what you want to do, if you were to download this, or you wanted to use your own samples, of course, um, this would actually be empty when you first downloaded it. So you would have to add your own sample paths in here, like this. So this is just an open panel object that is using text set to set the text into this text object. And when you use a big number like this, it appends the text to the next available position in the text file. So I can just keep adding these in here and it will just keep appending them. And you know, you could add 50 in here or something, but it's actually only going to load four because that's how I have it set up right now, which we can change as you will soon see. And so what we've just done is changed this text file object but it didn't actually load them into the samplers. To do that, you click this Reload Samples button, which then reads that text file and spits out the paths into each of the four samplers that we currently have. And that's great, but if we were to say close this and then reopen it, it would load the text file that's saved on disk. And the text file that's saved on the disk is not actually this. This is a temporary file. What we have to do is write this out to the disk using this handy write button right here. And then the next time this loads, it will read that same file as I've written right here. And then um, on load bang, it loads the samples for you into the sampler objects. And so as you can see, uh, if I do that, Close this, open this, and it's ready to go. So um, to get into more detail here, you could probably pause the video at this point if you just want to mess around with it. But um, if you wanted to say add more samples to this, if you wanted like eight clips to play with or something, the first thing you would want to do is change this. Let's change it to nine so that we have eight clips we can play, but then also the ninth button on top for the mute. And then down here in the samplers sub patch, I'm using a clone object to copy my um, sample player abstraction. So this is what's actually playing each individual sample. You can see this is sample one that's loaded in here or uh, sample zero, I guess. 
And so with clone, you specify the number of copies that you want. And currently it's four. So all we have to do is change this to eight. And then we should be ready to go. We just have to add some more um, sample paths in here to load. So um, let's just grab some of these. I, I don't actually have eight more samples to load in here, but let's do some duplicates. Why not? Okay, and then as before, um, this is just the text file. It didn't actually load them into the samplers. So we just click that. And then if we want to save this, we click that. And so now when we click on these guys, it'll play the samples from before. But then down here, it plays the new samples that we just added. And so using this method, um, especially using the clone object, it's very easy to say like, make this 16 or 32 or 64 or whatever you want. And all you have to do is give it a number that corresponds to the sampler that you want to address and uh, make sure that you load a sample into it in some way. I'm doing that through this text file, but if you wanted to do it through some other way, like if your samples are numerically indexed or something, you can just send the file path through here. Um, just look up how the clone object works. You need the like number of the um, uh, instance that you want to address, and then you um, give it the um, whatever um, input you want into the inlet and it will address that one. So here I'm setting it to the number that we want to address, like let's say sample eight. So you set it to eight and then now whatever goes in the inputs is going to the eighth copy of the abstraction. And that is pretty much that. Um, it gets a bit more complicated here in the sequencer when it's uh, keeping track of the tempo, um, it's just a counter. But if you wanted to like change the time signature or something, you would have to mess with this. Um, I didn't really spend any time doing that. And um, also loading the samples. Um, typically that's not very difficult, but on PC and just like the way that my system is set up, there will be spaces in the path. So like here you see C program space files space and pure data interprets this as a list. So it will see this as the first item, this is the second item, and then this is the third item. And so what I had to do was convert that list to a single symbol. And there's no easy way to do that in pure data vanilla. I know using Cyclone, there's like list to symbol. I think it's it's something like that. But so this is just an abstraction I made that um, does that automatically. And it's kind of complicated. But um, in my experience, it just works. And that's exactly what you'd want. So it's perfect. Um, that's pretty much it. If you have any other questions or think that I didn't explain this at all, then uh, let me know.